back inside the Alex Stroh Show. My name is Alex Stroh, and we go to the phone lines now as we are joined by the point guard of Marquette University from 2001 to 2005. He was a member of the Marquette 2003 Final Four team and currently with, I'm totally going to slaughter this, Vinoli Cremona of the LBA in Italy. It is my, the great Travis Diener. Travis, thanks so much for uh, jumping on with us, man. Hope everything's good on your end during these crazy times. Yeah, we're doing well. Thanks for having me. So talk to me, man. Obviously playing ball in Italy yet. Now you mentioned as we had a couple seconds before we went live, uh, you're back in Wisconsin with the family. Uh, how, how have the last couple months been for you? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's uh, definitely been a, a little crazy, I think, for everybody. But, you know, for us, we were, uh, you know, kind of in the epicenter of, of this virus for for a while. And we were very fortunate to get out and get home um and you know got got back home and you know dealt with the quarantine and uh you know all the restrictions that have gone on you know like everybody else but uh we've been healthy um which is the most important part and just kind of you know now just enjoying the uh the weather that's that's turned here in the last couple of weeks so uh all in all we're doing well um no complaints good to hear my friend yeah you mentioned being in the epicenter of that I, I wanted to know kind of what that situation was like so what was the timeline for you yeah it was you know everything was happening really really fast as far as um regulations and restrictions uh, it seemed like every like six to 12 hours in italy uh something new was happening so it happened fast where you know one day you're out you know, you could do pretty much anything you want. And then, then, you know, 24 hours later, it was, it was, uh, essentially you couldn't leave your house. And if you did, you'd get fined. Wow. Um, only one person was allowed to go to the grocery store once a week. Um, and I think they, they held that for about two months. I mean, they're just now getting back to some sort of, uh, normal life. Um, but, uh, yeah, it got crazy quick. It was a little surreal. It was kind of, you know, it, when, when we drove to the airport the morning we got out, you know, it was, uh, almost like a movie. Um, uh, you know, so we got lucky to get out. Uh, the, the airport shut down the day we, the, essentially right after our flight left for, oh, wow. for Frankfurt, uh, the airport completely shut down. Um, so, we had a great trip coming back. Actually, we got we got very lucky. Otherwise, we would have been stuck there. I think, uh, and who knows when we would have got back. So we we're we we're very very lucky. Wow. Well, happy to hear all, everything's all good. I mean, that is uh, it has been a crazy few months. So happy to hear that, man. But uh, let's go to basketball. You're playing out in Italy. You've been there for about a decade. You're you're still feeling good, loving ball. Everything's all good on the court. Uh, I mean, I I, I love ball. Yeah, uh, feeling good. A, a different story. I mean, when you get you know, when you get to, when the, the age starts to creep up and up, you know, there's days where you just, you know, you don't feel very well, but, uh, I feel very, I feel well enough to, to continue to try to, to grind it out and to play. I know basketball has always you know, been a huge part of my life since I was a little kid and I enjoy, you know, the games aren't the problem anymore. It's, uh, you know, the preparation the time in the summer right now, it's keen, keeping yourself ready to go. It's the preseason. That's the stuff that, uh, is hard to hard mentally to to get going, but uh, yeah, we'll see. We'll see. I don't know if this if if I'll go back and play again. It's kind of a decision that we have to make, but um, yeah, it's been a, a great experience overseas for us. Hey man, if you called it quits now, uh, no nobody would bat an eye because look at you. Just a year ago, you won a title and you were dropping what was it, twenty six points in the semis? I think I saw you. You still got it, man. <laughs> yeah, I guess. Uh, uh, blind squirrel can find a nut one. There you while. go. There you go. Uh, joined by Travis Diener here in the Alex Strove. So at Diener Travis on Twitter, the Marquette point guard from 2001 to 2005. Uh, Travis, you've been playing with the Golden Eagles in the basketball tournament the last couple of summers. Uh, and, and man, you still got it. You can't tell me otherwise. Uh, what's that experience been like, you know, getting on the court with a bunch of former Marquette alum? Yeah, that's been uh that's been really fun for me uh because you're you're playing with guys that for me the guys that came after me um and guys that I've watched uh, go through the Marquette, you know, program and 
to be able to compete with these guys and, and put on the jersey and, and represent Arquette again in a, in a smaller uh, fashion, of course, but something that still means a lot to, to people. And uh, it's been a blast because, you know, all these games are on ESPN. And, you know, when I'm playing overseas, not many people get a chance right. to see me or don't know much about the Italian League. So the chance to, to play high-level basketball against really, really good competition uh, and a prize that is uh, pretty incredible. Uh, the basketball tournament's done a great job of of really putting this together, and I've enjoyed every minute of it. And it's it's really it's really given me you know so many memories um, for the rest of my life that I never thought I'd have a chance to do again. And you bring up the basketball tournament. You're you're absolutely spot on. It is wonderfully done. One of the aspects of that, other than seeing guys like you, who a lot of us you know, have seen on the court way back in the heyday uh, is the Elam ending that they, that they have. We saw it in the NBA all-star game this year. I wanted to get your thoughts on the Elam ending. Yeah, I, I love it. Um, I, I think, you know, as a, as a kid, anyone who's played basketball and in the driveway, every game that, that ends is on a, you know, on a buzzer shot or a game winning shot. And this kind of takes you back to that. You know, it's uh, there's not, there's no following. It seems like the end of games go quicker. Um, the refs kind of don't want to decide the outcome and, you know, you got to make a shot to win a game. And I think you're going to see this incorporated throughout basketball a little more. I, I could see the NBA, you know, uh, maybe doing this in the regular season, like maybe for overtime, right. uh, because it is different. I think it's, uh, and I think the fans like it, uh, you know, if you're down, if you're down 10 with, with three minutes left in the game, in all likelihood, you're not going to win that game. In this scenario, you get a few stops, uh, you make a couple shots, uh, you're right back in it. So um, I think that the, you know, the chance of a comeback maybe goes a little higher than, than a regular, you know, foul. Have to, guys have to miss free throws, stuff like that. So I've I've enjoyed it. Uh, obviously, we've had success with it. I've had some personal success with it, yes, so maybe I'm biased towards it, <laughs> but um, I enjoy it. No, you're the perfect guy to ask because you have set, had some. Uh, said success. Now, Travis, I want to switch gears just uh, a smidge because I, I have kind of a weird question for you. Uh, have you ever read your Wikipedia page? Someone sent it to me after, I believe it was after last year's TBT about, uh, I think it said something about playing in the TBT with, uh, after drinking like a bunch of white claws and cutting stuff like that. Someone sent it to me. You got it. I'm going to ask you about that. I'm going to read it to you, then ask you about it. So here's what it says on your Wikipedia page, Travis. He rejoined the Marquette alumni team for the championship weekend of the 2019 tournament, hitting two consecutive three-pointers. Now, here we go. While wearing cowboy boots without socks to win in the semifinals versus misspelled Team Hines while drunk on 12 cans of White Claw. <laughs> Where does well, that come from? That's... I don't know. I guess if I could change a couple of things, it'd be good because then the the legend would grow, and I won't I won't challenge it. But maybe uh, like seven threes in a row to finish. Right. Um, you know, cowboy boots is a good one, and, and maybe like maybe like a case of Miller Lights, twelve white claws. I don't know. It kind of sounds kind of soft, so I have to <laughs> like a case of Miller Lights. Maybe like upgrade to twisted teas. You know, I drank way too many of those this weekend. So who knows? Uh, exactly. But I, I can confirm. I did watch the clip. You were not wearing cowboy boots, and you were wearing socks. Yeah, I was. I was, I was dressed just like a basketball player was. That was. Uh, I don't know who. I don't know how you can get it in there and change people's. Wikipedia pages, but uh, I found that pretty comical. Yeah, I, and I'm I'm just shocked that nobody's removed the fact that you were drunk on 12 cans of White Claw while hitting. I mean, you seriously hit just a deep ass three. I mean, this was not just a normal three pointer catch and shoot type of shot. This was a pull up, and you knew it was going in both times. Yeah, yeah. Fortunately, it was uh, the defense, especially in the second one. They it was a, kind of a transition play and they, they kind of got lost for a second. And, um, yeah, it was, it was, a uh, it was a shot that, you know, I told the guys like in the Elam ending, if you get in the half court, it's very physical and it's hard to get a good shot off. So I said, you know, even if they make a shot, we have to push it. And they, they made a shot. And I think they got a little relaxed and, you know, just pushed it in transition and, and found an opening. And unfortunately, uh, you know, knocked it down. Joined by Travis Diener here on the Alex Strofe. So, Travis, a couple days ago, the basketball tournament tweeted a, a reaction of your dad. 
I, I don't know if it was to that shot, but it was one of your uh, game winners in TBT. So I got to ask, man, it, that was an awesome video. But who's more intense, you or your dad? Oh, my dad. Okay. That's all to tell us. I figured, yeah. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm crazy, but, you know, I get it from someone and Tim. Um, it was funny because that, that game was uh, – that video was from – uh, I believe two years ago when we okay. beat Syracuse and I hit the shot and my mom already had known the, it was, uh, it was on, they had recorded it cause they weren't gone. They were gone. So my mom knew the outcome. My okay. dad did. So mom had the video on him as the ending was happening. So it was, uh, that show is just a very, very short glimpse of, you know, who my dad is as, as a person. He's very, very intense, very, very competitive. I think that's where, you know, a lot of that comes from, uh, in me. Um, but yeah, he's, uh, <laughs> There's a running joke in our family that there should always be a, a Bob camp. Bob's my dad's name uh, at every game that I've played him because he goes he goes a little crazy yeah, in the game. That's fantastic. Yeah, yeah, he, uh, he, he's just as uh, supportive as he can be. So that was good to see. So I want to throw back, turn back the clock a little bit, Travis. And looking back at this 2003 Final Four that you played in, I'm just going to name some of the guys that were a part of that. Right? You have you, you have your coach Tom Crean, your teammates. Dwayne Wade, Steve Novak, uh, the guys you played in the Final Four, Jim Beheim and Carmelo Anthony, Roy Williams, Kirk Heinrich, also a, a part of that Final Four. Do you ever reflect and say, you know, holy smokes, that was one of the neatest Final Fours I could be a part of? Yeah, it was. I mean, it was – there was a lot of talent, uh, both player-wise and then obviously the coaches were, uh, you know, Coach you know, Coach Cream and – Coach Williams, Coach Bayheim, and then Coach uh, Coach Barnes with with Texas, uh, and then you had T.J. Ford in Texas, who was yeah, I believe the National Player of the Year that year. And then, like you said, Heinrich and Collison, and then obviously Mello, and then you know we had Wade. Uh, so it's star power. And I think back then, you know, that's that was the case in most Final Fours because you know guys now um, they're leaving early and they're not. You know the, the 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 level of basketball kind of declines because you know most teams are really young and guys are leaving and kind of the you know the infrastructure you don't build camaraderie and guys are you know teams don't get old and obviously if teams get old they get better yep. and we were an older team I think all those teams were older um, so you know the the quality of each team was uh, was huge I mean the week before we beat a Kentucky team that was you know the best team in the country and they were loaded as well so. Uh, I just think, you know, in the last 15 years, uh, obviously with, with the way guys leave early for the for the draft and, and for the right reasons, but, you know, it's just the quality of, of college basketball has gone down. You led me right into my next question. Thanks so much for that, Travis. I was going to ask you your opinion on kind of the one-and-done uh, format, if you will, that's kind of been so prevalent the last decade or so or even a little bit more than that. It, it seems like you mentioned you can't build the camaraderie not a huge fan, but you said also uh, it's for the right reasons. Overall thought on kind of the one and done we've been seeing? Yeah, I mean, like, like I said, like you're not going to get these great teams anymore. Um, you know, the likelihood of of getting old is, is tough. Um, but, you know, if, if you have the chance to, to, you know, live out a lifelong dream of playing in the NBA, and um, nobody should tell you no. And I don't think – I personally don't think you should even, I mean, if you have an opportunity to go pro after high school, um, I think you should have that option. I think, you know, if you're ready and, and you're and you're going to take that risk of, of playing in the NBA and sacrificing everything, then you should have that, that ability to do that. Um, but yeah, like I said, college basketball obviously is going to be hurt by that only because, I mean, as you're seeing now, some of these high school guys are just going straight to the G League. And I think you're some, some have gone overseas. So, I think you're going to see more and more of that, but uh, it's unfortunate because the level of college basketball it's still, I mean, nothing will ever change how people feel about college basketball because you're still getting that, you know, that raw emotion and, you know, you got the connection to your school and, and things of that sort. The, the overall level is, is, has dropped a little bit. Great answer. Appreciate that. Now, uh, you're still playing, and you mentioned, you know, maybe maybe not, but your college teammate, Dwayne Wade, is not. I, I want a quote out of you. You could take him one-on-one, -on -one, right? Oh, gee, no, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know about that. <laughs> How about Novak? Uh, depend, depend, depends what kind of shape he's in. Steve? Yeah. 
Yeah, I would, I would smoke Steve. I was, I Steve was, uh, yeah, Steve, I can take. Okay, but but Dwayne, maybe not. We need it. We need it a few more years I of retirement. I got a few kind of JPs in. I know Steve hasn't. I talk and see Steve quite a bit, uh, and Steve probably hasn't, you know, picked up a basketball too many times since he retired, and he's always had kind of bad speed. So uh, <laughs> I would like my matchup there. Now, Dwayne, uh, Dwayne's probably in, still in pretty good shape, um, and obviously uh, he's one of the best players ever to pick up a basketball. So that would be a tough one for me. Absolutely. You gave me the quote, so I appreciate that. Last one for you, Travis. Uh, the other day, I, I really stalked your Twitter here. Uh, an account called Random College Basketball Players tweeted about you. Is that weird to be like, oh, I'm just random now? I mean, back in 03, you guys were the S word. Now you're just random. I mean, what, what was that like just seeing your picture pop up? <laughs> I actually take, I, I, I take it all as a compliment. Okay. You know, if, if people are posting, uh, from my college days, 17 years later, I think uh, I take it as a huge compliment and I'm humbled by it. You know, it's, uh, I can be random. Um, you know, it's, uh, it's always humbling to see yourself, uh, you know, later on, you, you kind of appreciate, you know, the journey that I, I appreciate the journey I've been on and, and the places I've been. So um, I take it as a compliment and uh, I, I, there's no ill will towards anybody who ever posts anything about me. I don't take, uh, there's one thing I don't take myself really seriously, so I mean you can you can say I was a bum too. It wasn't really it doesn't really bother me. I can I can assure you weren't a bum. Um, I'm glad you don't take yourself too seriously because we never should. And uh, and we appreciate you jumping on, Travis. Always a pleasure, and uh, we'll have to do it again soon, my man. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me on. Stay safe, stay healthy. We'll, we'll talk to you guys soon. Back at you, man. Appreciate it. That is uh, Travis Diener. Marquette point guard from 2001 to 2005, member of the 2003 Marquette Final Four team. As you heard, some great stuff out of him. He could smoke Steve Novak one-on-one, his, his former college teammate is what he said. Bad feet. He said Steve Novak had bad feet. I love that. Uh, we are going to take a, a quick break. On the other side, we are going to release our fight night topic for this week. So don't you dare go anywhere. This is the Alex Strove Show on Cream City Central.